so much for uh, tuning in. Let me get our Zoom folks squared away here. Hang on one second. Got a few people we've got to sign in. Yeah, I'm going to ask you to turn your copy of God's Word to uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. I don't know what's going on here, so hang on a second. Sorry about this. All right. I'm just going to continue to uh, carry on here. I don't know what's going on quite frankly with the uh, uh, it's a different screen than what I'm accustomed to we're talking good 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 uh, hang on a second I don't know. I'm hoping it's on if it's not I apologize um, I hope y'all can see. I'm, I'm not showing a picture here, so I apologize. Anyway, I, <clears throat> I hope you're okay. Uh, we're going to be in Proverbs chapter 5. And uh, we uh, finished up 4, uh, talking about the importance of walking in wisdom. Uh, and um, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to doing all kinds of crazy things right now, and I don't know what's going on. Okay, we're, we're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> I wish I knew what was happening there. It's not showing anybody uh, on the screen here, so I'm hoping folks are just going to chime in as they can. Um, uh, it's all good, though. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5, we talked about walking in wisdom, uh, godly wisdom, knowing the Word of God so that we can carry on our lives. Uh, God has uh, written them down for us so that we can learn them and grow and develop. And uh, so we should be uh, uh, able to follow His direction, His guidance. And then Solomon begins to move into chapter 5, and he starts talking about healthy relationships. And he starts out by talking about the importance of avoiding uh, being tempted uh, physically uh, or emotionally. Uh, God wants for us to have healthy relationships. Uh, healthy relationships are, are how we were designed. You know, this the coronavirus that we're in, encountering right now uh, is uh, been very difficult for us because we have uh, not been able to interact with people like we want to. We were designed to be social beings, but God's word says we need to have healthy uh, relationships with folks, and so Solomon in his wisdom, says we've got to watch out for those people that will try to seduce us or try to draw us into an unhealthy or uh, ungodly type of relationship. Uh, so uh, when, when Solomon is uh, saying this, he starts in chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. You follow along with me right here. He said, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen closely to my understanding. How many times have we heard that before? Um, sorry, I'm having some things. I don't know what's going on here. Um, we're just kicking right along. That's all I know to do. It's just carrying right along. All right. 
So we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm doing my part. I hope, I hope you guys can see it okay. I, it's acting very strange for me right now. Uh, anyway, he says, pay attention, uh, listen closely, so that you may maintain discretion. Now, discretion is having sound, doing something uh, with wise judgment, making sure that you're doing the right thing. God says, if you, or, uh, Solomon says, if you pay attention to me, you'll make good choices. And then he says, and carry on in, section, in, in verse 2, he says, and your lips safeguard knowledge. Now, we've talked a great deal about having the Word of God as a part of our lives so that we can, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just getting some folks checked in here. Uh, uh, sorry. All right, we'll just carry on from here. Um, sorry about it's just doing some strange things that I don't know why. Uh, one of the things I'm finding out about Zoom is that it has a tendency to be hacked and all kinds of things can take place. So there, I hope you're getting this out there, those of you who chimed in. If you're not, I'm very sorry. We're trying our best to uh, get this thing to work. But anyway, he says, he says you want to maintain discretion. In other words, make wise choices, make sound judgment, and your lips will safeguard knowledge. He's saying, if the Word of God is a part of your life, you'll be careful to use that as the way in which you express things and interact with people, as opposed to responding to the way the, way the world does. I had a conversation with a young person who had a whole lot of ugly words that he had in his vocabulary. And I asked him, I said, why do you use language like that? Well, it's just the way we talk. And I said, well, actually, when you use ugly language, when you use words like that, what you're basically expressing to people is not that you're cool or not that you're in control, but quite frankly, that you don't have a working knowledge of the English language. You're having to use filler into your, your conversations to make it sound more uh, forceful or whatever you're trying to get across. Well, that's not what we were intended to do. Our responses, our interaction with one another, needs to be based on the knowledge that we have about the Word of God and respond accordingly. So he says, not only are you supposed to maintain discretion, uh, make sound judgment, but you're also supposed to communicate uh, those things in an appropriate fashion. So then it gets into verse 3. So I'm not going to get into the pay attention, listen closely, because we've looked at that in verses chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. So we're not going to get into that again. You can go back and reread that. But I'm going to pick up here in verse 3. But before we go any further, would you join me in a word of prayer? Father, we just ask your blessings on this time. Teach us here tonight. Sorry about the technical things, Lord. I hope it didn't take away from your intended message. And I pray, Father, that from this point forward, we'll be focused on the things that you have for us. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we ask all of this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. So we're in Proverbs chapter 5, beginning in verse 3, and it says, Through the lips of the forbidden woman drips honey. Now, I told you right at the beginning here that we're going to be talking about seduction. And Solomon knew the importance that a healthy relationship is God-honoring and God-blessing, so on and so forth, so, so on and so forth but that an inappropriate relationship is going to be based on uh, trying to entice someone to do something other than what God would intend them to do. So Solomon is trying to start right off the beginning. He says, don't let yourself be seduced. Now, don't misunderstand. Uh, uh, in a healthy relationship between a husband and a wife, and that's where, this is re this is, that's where seduction is supposed to take place, uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, enticing uh, your spouse to have a, a healthy uh, physical relationship. Uh, but he's saying the unhealthy ones are very dangerous. So he starts out by saying in verse 3, he said, uh, Through the lips of a forbidden, uh, I'm sorry, though the lips of a forbidden woman drip honey and her words are smoother than oil, in the end she is bitter as wormwood 
and she is as sharp as a double-edged sword. So let's break that down for a second. First of all, the lips and her mouth. We talked about last week how the eyes were the, the way into the heart and the mouth was the way out, the way that we express ourselves. Well, the seductress, that individual who's going to try to draw you away from your biblical standards of your relationship with God, that individual is going to use their mouths to entice. It says here, through her, or the, uh, though the through the lips, no, though the lips of the forbidden women drip drip honey. But the idea there is he's trying to give this word of flattery. Put back in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter two, verse sixteen. Proverbs two sixteen. Look what it says. It says, when you, and it's talking about again, walking in wisdom, understanding, understand what righteous, just, and integrity in a way. It says. He says, godly wisdom will, look at what it says, it will rescue you from a forbidden woman, a woman who is trying to entice you, who is trying to encourage you to come away from the relationship that you have, i.e. your spouse, and draw you into something that is inappropriate based on the Word of God. He said, godly wisdom, knowing what righteousness and, and justice and blessings, that will rescue you from a forbidden woman from a stranger with her flattering talk. Now, we know that folks love to be flattered. We love to hear how good we are. We love to have talk and hear how cute we are, whatever it happens to be. Well, the seductress, the, uh, the temptress, is going to use those uh, human weaknesses to draw us into the wrong relationship. So the lips are what's used here. And in this situation, it says... Though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey. In other words, she says all the right things. She acts all the, the right way. She puts all of that effort into trying to entice through those uh, sweet words, those enticing words. Though the lips of a forbidden woman, a woman drip honey and her words are smoother than oil. Uh, my daughter had a car. And she didn't get the oil changed on a regular basis. And one day she was driving, and all of a sudden that engine just froze up. Now, with just a little bit of oil, that engine would have run just fine. But because she didn't get that thing done, the engine froze up. She had to put a new engine in her car. Well, oil is a great lubricant. Oil is a great way to keep things loose. Well, what it's basically saying here is that her words are smooth like oil. She's just trying to grease those skids to make it easier to draw you into uh, that inappropriate relationship. Now, I know some of you are sitting there going, man, that is, there's nothing to that I would never fall victim to. And good, praise the Lord, you wouldn't. But Solomon knew that human weakness is a problem for every individual. So the first thing he deals with here, basically, as far as the application of the information he's given us, is to avoid this temptress, this woman, this individual who wants to draw you away. And he says, and the first way in which they usually do that is through conversation, through speech. I hear people communicating in all different types of ways these days through text messages, through emails, through video chat, through, uh, through uh, Facebook Live. I mean, there's all different ways. Don't think for a second the devil won't utilize those things to draw us away from those healthy relationships. So we have to be very, very careful uh, and not get pulled into um, uh, that... Um, <clears throat> that ugly relationship that, is, that could easily pull us in here. So it says, all right, I gave you all that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to ask you to turn your copy of God's Word to Psalm chapter 119. Now, we've looked at several verses in 119, a couple of which we're going to look at again here. But turn to Psalm 119. And, um, and uh, while you're doing that, Psalm 119, I want to point something out to you here um, in uh, the... Uh, the Song of Solomon. Sorry, my fingers are all numb here. I can't seem to get them to work right. The Song of Solomon. If you look in Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 11, 
It talks about the healthy relationship between a husband and a wife. He says, your lips drip sweetness like the honeycomb, my bride. So in other words, he's talking to his wife here. He says, your lips are sweet. Honey and milk are under your tongue. The fragrance of your garments is like the fragrance of Lebanon. It, so there was nothing wrong in the, the seduction in a healthy married relationship. That Through the Song of Solomon, you see that. But, but Solomon was off saying, don't let that woman, or in women in your case, don't let that man try to entice you uh, to go against the promises and the vows that you made. Now you're in Psalm 119. I'm going to ask you to turn to verse 9. Psalm 119, verse 9. We're going to read verses 9 through 16. Look what it says. The question is asked by the psalmist. is, how can a young man keep his way pure? Good question. How do we go about doing that? Well, then it explains it the next verse, the next sentence. It says, by living according to your word. How does the young man keep his ways pure? By living according to the word of God. By living and loving the word of God and making it a part of it. He goes on to say, verse 10, I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Why would the psalmist be afraid about getting away from the, from the word of God? Because he knows when he gets away from the word of God, he can be drawn into something else. He says, he says, I seek you with all my heart. Don't let me, Lord, get away from your commands. Verse 11, we've looked at this several times. We'll look at it again here. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. He says, I've made your word so much a part of me that I know I'm not going to do anything that's going to be disappointing to you. Verse 12, praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. Many of us don't understand the Bible. There are things in the Bible that I don't always understand. And I have to go back and read people that are much wiser than I am to try to get understanding. But I ask God a lot of times, Lord, I want to understand this better. So you've got to be willing to say, teach me, Lord, and, and be willing to learn. Verse 13, with my lips I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. He said, so not only do I know it, but I share it. I talk to others about it. Verse 14, I rejoice in following your statutes statutes as one rejoices in great riches. He said, Lord, your word is so valuable to me. I'm thankful for the parameters you set for me to live my life. Verse 15, I meditate on all your precepts and consider your ways. He said, Lord, I, I listen to your word. I read your word and I want to be like you or I want to do what you want me to do. Verse 16, I delight in your decrees. I do will not neglect your word. He says, God, your word is what is important to me. Your word is what I want to focus on. Your word is what's going to direct me. Your word is what's going to encourage me. Don't let me be enticed. Don't let me turn to the right or the left, but let me keep my eyes only on you. Look down in verse 103 of that same thing. He said, how sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey in my mouth. So the psalmist says, Lord, your words is what gives me satisfaction. Now don't think for a second the devil won't use that same kind of idea to entice you away. Look what it said here in our text. Though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey, they are something that is desirable, something that we want, something that we uh, 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 go after. He said the devil's going to want to do that, bring that person in that's going to try to entice you. Well, God says, I want my words to be sweet in your mouth. I don't want somebody to use their their flattery or their, their sin to, to draw you away and entice you in such a way. So he says, uh, though the lips of the forbidden woman drip honey and her words are smoother than oil, verse 4, look what it says, in the end. Now, follow me on this. What it's saying there is, in the future, if you're interacting in a relationship right now that's not healthy, there will come a point when that trap or that snare will spring. Uh, you will start out innocent enough. Maybe it's just a little conversation or a subtle look or something along that line. But it will progress to the point, and in the end, there's going to come a time in the future when that, when that trap will slap shut, and then you're caught. Look what it says here. In the end, she is bitter as wormwood. Wormwood. 
uh, the idea of a, a bitter substance, a very unpleasant substance to consume. It can quite frankly make you sick. It's symbolic in this thing to say, in the end, she will bring suffering to your life. Some men, some women that are listening to me right now may know what we're talking about here today. That uh, somewhere in the past you had that relationship or you had someone in your life that seemed like, oh, they were just telling you all the things you wanted to hear and, and encouraging you and on and on and on. But then sometime in the future, boom, they stuck it to you. They, you got yourself jammed up and you've been paying the price ever since. Now, praise God, God can forgive and God does forgive but understand that there is a sickness that will go along with that relationship, and that's all she's trying to do. She's just trying to entice you into what's going to ultimately result in suffering down the road. He said, in the end, in the future, she is as bitter as wormwood. Seems all sweet and all kind and all fuzzy right now, but later on, my friends, it will be a sickness, it will be a suffering, it will be a sadness that you never expected to be involved in, all because you allow the flattery to draw you in to the fallacy. That's the dangerous part. In the end, it will be bitter as wormwood and sharp as a double-edged sword. Now, pardon me, I have to take a drink here, I'm a little dry. A double-edged sword has an edge on both sides. That sword has an edge on this side, an edge on this side. It means it can cut both ways. Boom, 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 boom. She is like that double-edged sword. She, she will attack you in so many different ways, not, e not even intending it. Uh, the idea of a sword is symbolic of death. So not only will she bring suffering, but quite frankly, it, should li it could literally cost you your life. We have a friend that uh, got involved with a woman, and he wasn't anywhere near. He had come through a drug alcohol program, and he decided he wanted to start having a relationship. And he had a relationship with this woman, and I said, man, get away from her. You don't need that in your life right now. He didn't listen, and ended up getting into an altercation with her, and, and he ended up spending uh, having to go to prison uh, because of the situation that they, uh, that they encountered, all because... He was not willing to put aside that relationship to better himself in the Lord and wanted to be a, understand that that, that that relationship may start out feeling like it's good and acting like it's good, but ultimately it will end in suffering. And that's what Solomon was warning about. This woman's going to travel the road of death and heading right on down to hell. He said, in the end, she is bitter as wormwood and as sharp as a double-edged sword. She is going to do major damage to you. Uh, we see that symbolic, uh, the, the wormwood is symbol, symbolic of suffering in Deuteronomy 29, 18. You can look that up later on if you want to. But I want to point you to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 26. Now, you know that Solomon wrote the book of Proverbs, or most of the Proverbs, some of the things he, he collected, but most of, most of the book of Proverbs. He also wrote the, the book of Song of Solomon, or Song of Songs, depending on what translation you're reading. And I just referenced that a little while ago about, about a healthy relationship between a husband and a wife. And you should read that. It's uh, interesting. Uh, young boys in the Jewish, uh, in the Jewish uh, faith, uh, they were forbidden to read the Song of Solomon because it was so racy. But God likes a healthy relationship between a husband and wife. But then Solomon also writes the book of Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes is later on in Solomon's life when he's made a lot of errors. And a lot of those had to do with the fact uh, that he messed around with the wrong women. So here is one who said, stay away from the wayward woman. And then later on got himself jammed up because of that wayward woman. If you're in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, look at verse 26. He said, I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare whose heart is a trap, and whose hands are chains. A man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner she will ensnare. You know what he's saying there? He said, man, there is nothing more disappointing than getting in the wrong relationship and having that relationship drag you somewhere where you never wanted to go and keeping you somewhere where you never wanted to stay. He says, I find it more bitter than death. 
the woman who is a snare. That woman who is is trying to to entice you away from the relationship you're in right now or trying to get you to do something uh, that is uh, inappropriate or something that is illegal even. Uh, he said, "He said it's better to die than to have a woman who's going to do something like that, whose heart is a trap and whose hands are chained. He said every aspect of that lady is trying to trap you into doing something or being something that God never intended you for intended you to be. The man who pleases God, God will escape her. A man who wants to please God is going to recognize that trap and run, run, run as fast as he possibly can." But unfortunately, the sinner, that individual who wants to work all, or wants to live in the flesh and rather than live in the spirit, he says that sinner will be ensnared by that woman. Psalm chapter 37, verse 37 says this, Consider the blameless, observe the upright. There is a future for the man of peace. Listen, verse 38 says, but all sinners will be destroyed. The future of the wicked will be cut off. Look what it said there in Ecclesiastes. It said the sinner's going to be entrapped or ensnared by that wayward woman. And all sinners will be separated from God in a literal place called hell. A place that God didn't intend for man to be. God made that for the devil and his minions, his demons to go. If man goes to hell, it's only because he chose to go and rejected the things of God. He says the future of the wicked, they will be cut off. Not that they will be annihilated. They will be put aside in that place, separated from God. So he says, look, in the end, this, this, this relationship is suffering and death it is a bad situation, and you don't want to have anything to do with that. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, this just doesn't apply to me. Well, great. But if, it, if you know it, and you know somebody that may be, may be messing around or may be toying with the idea of stepping out on their spouse or something like that, friends, you need to warn them. You need to, to tell them that there is a consequence that will be paid. I don't care how slick you are. I don't care how confident you are. I don't have care how secretive you are. Eventually, all this stuff is laid out bare. If not in this world, in the, in the world to come, in, the, in heaven itself. Don't go near this person. She is going to tear you up. Look what it says in verse 5 of Proverbs chapter 5. It said, her feet go down to death. Now, if you turn back to chapter 4, verse, uh, uh, verse 18, uh, cha Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Remember, we're talking about walking in wisdom versus walking in wickedness. He says in verse 18, he says, The path of the righteous is like the dawn, the, the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter, brighter until midday. In other words, he said the path that God places on, that course that he has mapped out for us, and we talked about that throughout the Proverbs in this particular study, uh, that course that he marked out for us, he said it just gets better and better until you leave this earth because you're walking with God, you're following the Lord, you're being obedient, he's blessing you. He said it just gets better and better. Look what it says in verse 19 though. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. He said they're just walking into oblivion and totally unaware of the dangers ahead. Well, Solomon reiterates this in verse 5. He said, her feet go down to death. Her steps head straight for Sheol or hell. He says she's heading a direction that is going to lead to destruction. And if she's heading that direction and she's going to entice you, guess what? You're going to end up the same place. You say, well, wait a minute, I'm saved. I can't, I'm not going to be in hell. My friends, I'm telling you there are consequences awaiting you that you never anticipated. And you don't need to go there. You don't need to be in that situation. She's chosen her path or he's chosen his path. You don't need to go along with them. Hear me on this. This is a dangerous, dangerous thing. The Bible says Sheol is the place of death. 
Uh, it's where the wicked, it's, it's, it's for the wicked, a place of no return, according to Job chapter 7, verse 9. It's a place of darkness, chapter, uh, Psalm chapter 143, verse 3. And it's a place of eternal torment, Isaiah 14, verse 11. This place is not a place you want to go, and yet that's where she's headed because she or he, whoever it happens to be, is living to entice and draw someone. Nobody wants to be by themselves in hell. They want to take somebody with them. But understand, friends don't exist in hell. Friendship and love are a product of God, and that doesn't exist in hell. So if you think you're going to hang out with all your, quote, buddies in hell, you are clueless, my friend, based on what the Word of God, because there is no friendship in God. There is no camaraderie. There is no interaction. It is every man for himself, and it is eternal torment. You don't want anything to do with that. So please hear me on this. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The payment that we have to pay as a result of our sin condition is death. But praise God, there's a second half of it. It says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even though we deserve death and hell, we can have eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. If you've been watching television, I've been watching, and there's a commercial on right now by Franklin Graham. And Franklin Graham gives the gospel presentation uh, right there on the television. He even invites folks to pray to receive Christ. And he says, if you've prayed to receive Christ, then call this number. We want to know. Friends, if you pray to receive Christ, I want to know. I want to know that you know Jesus. And I don't have to wonder uh, when you pass away whether you're in heaven or not. I've had funerals before where I've had to officiate, and folks would come up to me and they say, Pastor, where is my loved one in heaven right now? I said, I can't tell you that. I don't know. But I do know this, that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that you ask the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart. This wayward woman, she is heading right to a devil's hell. She is paying the debt that she owes through death. But praise God, there is, there is eternal life available through Christ. It says her feet go down to death. And her steps head straight for hell. We see that. Look at Proverbs chapter, I think I already looked at this. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 16, uh, 16 through 18. Yeah, I told you about 16, but follow along with me if you would. Proverbs chapter six, chapter 2, verse 16. Again, righteousness and so on and so forth. It said, it will rescue you from a forbidden woman, from a stranger with her flattery talk. Listen, who abandons the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. She made a promise to that spouse, and now she's stepping on that spouse to be with you, and she has forgotten the promise, and that promise was one man, one woman, for life in the eyes of God. She forget, and forgets the covenant of her God, for her house sinks down to death, and her ways to land in, in the land of the departed spirits. He says she is heading to hell on, the, on, a, fr on a, a freight train, and you don't want to be anywhere near that or anywhere involved with that. I've had ridiculous men say, well, I'm going to help change her. They're, in a, they're a married husband and wife. They're married, and, and they're going to get involved with some, some woman to change her. Friends, let the pastor talk to somebody. Let her talk to somebody else. You don't need to have that kind of relationship with a single woman if you're a married man. And you don't need to have that kind of relationship with a single man if you're a married woman. Don't do it. You're opening yourselves up to a problem. He says, her steps head straight to Sheol. The verse six, Proverbs chapter five, verse six, it says, she does not consider the path of life and she does not know her ways are unstable. She's all over the place. Her, her ways are unstable. John MacArthur says this, her steps willfully and predictably stagger here and there as she has no concern for the abyss ahead. The idea that it's right there in front of her, she's heading towards a cliff, she's running, or she's running with no concern about that, and she wants to take anybody along with her that she possibly can. She does not consider the path of life. She didn't want to do what's right. 
She wants to do what she wants to do. He doesn't want to do what's right. He wants to do what he wants to do. She doesn't even think about wanting to do what is God honoring. And she is heading headlong across that cliff uh, into that valley. She doesn't know her ways are unstable, the Bible says. Turn in your copy of God's Word to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. We're going to look at a few verses here. Excuse me, I'm so thirsty in that. Proverbs chapter 7. We're going to look at verse 10. Proverbs chapter 7, beginning in verse 10. Look what it says. Talking about, in verses 6 and following, you're talking about seduction. We're going to talk about this a few times in our Proverbs study. Excuse me, i got that Pepsi in my beard. Anyway, look at beginning in verse 10. A woman came to meet him, dressed like a prostitute, having a hidden agenda. What? The guy's going down the street, kind of minding his own business. This woman walks up to him looking, quote, good, and uh, with a hidden agenda. So she's got a plan in her mind. He says, she is loud and defiant. Her feet do not stay at home. Now in the street, now in the square, she lurks at every corner. She grabs him and kisses him. She brazenly says to him, I have made fellowship offerings today. I have fulfilled my vows. In other words, I went to church and I'm ready to mess around. I have fulfilled my vows. So I came out to meet you to search for you, and I found you. Look at the flattery. Oh, you're the only one that I would ever even think about doing this. I've done my religious part. Now I just, I'm just i so drawn to you that you're the only one that could ever satisfy my desires. He says, so I've come out to look for you, and I've searched for you, and I've found you. You, 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 she says. Verse 16. I've spread covering on my bed. In other words, this looks good. It's going to look good. He says, richly colored linen from Egypt. He said, I've perfumed my bed. In other words, not only is he giving, the, uh, giving attention to his eyes, but he's also uh, the, the, the sense of smell. Ooh, it smells good with myrrh and aloe and cinnamon. Come, let us drink deeply of lovemaking love until morning. Let us feast on each other's love. Verse 19. Here's the kicker. My husband is at home. So this is a married woman who is enticing this man to come and, and fool around with her. My husband is at home. He went on a long journey. He took a bag of money with him, and he will come home at a time of the full moon. In other words, quite a long time from now. She seduces him with her persistent pleading. She lures him with her flattery talk. Uh, he follows her. He follows her impulsively, like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer bounding toward a trap, until an arrow pierces its liver. In other words, until he is dead, like a bird darting into a snare. He does not know it will cost him his life. Doesn't that sound exactly like what's happening here in chapter 5, verse 6? Her feet are going down, and she wants to take somebody with her, and that's the kind of thing. That's why I think it's so important. Remember Psalm 119. Psalm 119 again, we're always looking at that. Verse 59 says, I have considered my ways, and I have turned my steps to your statutes. He says, I've looked at myself, God. I know that I'm a mess. I know that I've got things in my life that I don't need to have. And the only way I can find answers, the only way I can get out of this junk is to fill my heart with something that's good and wholesome and honest and loving. And the only place I find that, God, is in your word. I have turned my steps toward your statutes. I'm not going to go down with my feet uh, to that pathway of death like that wayward woman wants to go. I'm not heading down uh, to the shores of Sheol. No, 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 no. I want your word to fill me so that I will be filled and continue to walk in the fullness of God. May that be your heart as well. Now, next time we get together, we're going to look at 7 through 14 and continue in this conversation about uh, the wayward woman, the forbidden woman, the woman who wants to entice you and draw you away from what God has intended for you. Uh, understand, understand that when you interact in that kind of a fashion, it's going to cost you a lot because sin is always, always, always very expensive. It will cost you, it will cost you, and it will keep costing you. So don't 
go that route. Next time we get together, we'll talk more about this. You say, Pastor, this wasn't very uplifting. Look, friends, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. And I just hope that you're taking part of this in there and taking in there that even though it may not be a person that may want to entice you, maybe something, or maybe some activity, maybe some event, something like that is enticing you to go a different direction than what you were intended to do. Just be weird, just be aware of it and just be be focused on the word of God so that you'll be able to fend off whatever that temptation has to be. God bless you for being here this evening. I hope that you're having a great time. Please stay safe. I'm working right now on a way in which we can get back together as a church as soon as I can get our landlord to call me back. Uh, we'll make a plan on when we can have, start having services again. I think we're about to, to that point. This coming Sunday, of course, is Mother's Day. Uh, uh, make sure that uh, you get a chance to speak to your mom if your mom is still alive. If she's not, thank the Lord that he gave her to you. Uh, whether you had a good relationship or a bad relationship with your mom, God chose that mother to bring you into this world. And I'm mighty glad he did that. Uh, please enjoy the week. We love you. We're praying for you. Keep those prayer requests coming. We're keeping track of those. And as soon as we find out something about when we can start meeting together as a church, we will let you know. In the meantime, don't forget fourwindslove.org. That is our website. Uh, you can also go to our Four Winds, uh, Four Winds Church uh, YouTube page to see back uh, messages, both when we were in the theater and, of course, these ones we've been doing from home. A uh, special thanks to Ken Garner, who's been putting all these together for us on YouTube. He's been doing a great job, uh, and I really appreciate all his service. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Let's have a word of prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Father, you give us the warning, you give us the word, uh, now give us the will to go out and do what you've asked of us. Lord, we thank you so much for the blessing of this technology. Uh, may it be used for your glory and, and, and get the devil the heck out of this stuff. Uh, Lord, we just love you so much. We pray for those who are dealing with illness, those that are, uh, that are, that are isolated, Father. We pray that you meet all their needs. We pray, Lord, that we be sensitive to the moving of your spirit in ministering to our neighbors and our friends around us. Lord, until we can get back together and we continue to proclaim uh, you uh, individually and uh, as, uh, as, as publicly as we can. And we just love you so much, Lord, and thank you for this time. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. We will talk with you again soon.